Hi! In this video I'd like to do a relatively brief overview of how to sign and verify using the Schnorr digital signature. The main advantage to the signature is that most of the computation can be done before you actually want to send a message, therefore increasing speed when you actually go to send the message. It's not as, um, the time isn't as dependent on the message itself. Uh, next, the parameters. These are all uh, variables we're using. Um, before we can talk about how to sign and verify, there are a couple things we need to understand first. We have P, which is a prime number. We also have Q, which is a factor of P minus 1. We also have to choose an A, so that A to the power Q is 1 mod P. These three variables here are what we call global, meaning that anyone knows them. These are probably posted. Um, they're just sort of a set of known variables um, that can potentially be used for this digital signature. However, the S value right here, this is a secret right here. The S value, which is in between 0 and Q. And then the V is our public key. So this V value here is what we post online to allow somebody to verify our signature. It is our A value to the negative S, no, mod Q, not mod P, mod Q. In order to sign, we have to choose a random R that is in between 0 and Q. We then want to use that R to compute an X value, where X is A to the R mod P. We then want to concatenate with the message with x um, and a hash and get we get this value e right here. We also want to compute the value y where y is r plus se mod q, not mod p, mod q. What we want to then send is the message m, but we also want to send the signature which is two parts. We want to send E and Y in that order, and that's our signature for this message, so that the um, receiver can verify that um, it was you who sent the message. Recall that when you are trying to sign something digitally, you're not usually trying to hide the message, you're just trying to verify who says they sent it actually did send it. So now we've signed the message and we have sent it. Now the receiving parties need to be able to verify that what they've received is actually from you. So, just as a recap, what we've received is the M, E, and Y, and what is known publicly is the A, P, Q, and V. So what we have to do to verify is first we have to compute this X prime value, which equals A to the Y times V to the E mod P. And now what I did here is I just worked the math um, where I copied this down here, and then I substituted the V. If you recall, V equals a to the negative s. So I substituted a to the negative s in here for v, and then I rewrote that um, using simple exponent rules. And then if you recall, y is equal to r plus s times e, which I simply rearranged to solve for y, I mean, excuse me, solve for r, which equals y minus s e, which is what we have here in the exponent. So I substituted all this and put in r. So we have a to the r. And if you're, you recall, a to the r is what we said x equals. So theoretically, our x prime should be the original x computed by the sender, if it is a true signature. However, we weren't given the original x to verify. We can't verify that because we weren't given it. So what we have to do instead is we want to check and make sure the e's are the same. So we have the hash function, we have the message, and we have the um, x prime that we have computed right here. So if we do this computation and we find that the e value that we calculate is the same as what we send, we know that um, the whole thing winds up and it is a valid signature.